Let's get started by creating a session. After Pro Tools launches, you'll land on this quick start window. Here you will be given four different options. The first option is that you can create a session from a template. Pro Tools provides many different templates that you can use created by Avid, and you can also create your own templates to get up and running quickly. The second option is that you can create a blank session. The third option is to open a recent session in where you will see all the most recent sessions you have opened in the list to your right. The last option is to open a session where you will navigate to the session that you'd like to open. We are going to go ahead and create a blank session and let's talk about the session parameters. If you do not see the session parameters, just click on the triangle to expand the different options. The first option that you have is to choose what audio file type you'd like to use. The options they give you are WAV or AIFF. If you don't know what option to choose, I would recommend choosing WAV as that is the most common file format to use, although you can create equally as great recordings using either file format, and it's easy to convert to the other file format. The second option that you have is what sample rate you would like your session to be in. 44.1 is CD quality, and many great recordings have been made with 44.1 chosen as the sample rate for the project. However, there are options to choose higher sample rates. Just keep in mind that the higher sample rate you use, the faster your hard disk will fill up, and it will be a larger load on your computer when you are trying to run more complex sessions. The other option is bit depth. Now I recommend choosing 24-bit so that you have plenty of headroom while recording, and this will allow you to record your audio at lower levels while still keeping the digital noise floor at a safe distance. 16-bit is CD quality, and you can still get great results that way. And 32-bit is, of course, a nice option as well, but it will also fill up the hard drive a lot faster using this option. You also have an option here to choose interleaved. And what that does is that'll make it so that any stereo files that you're recording inside of Pro Tools will be stereo interleaved files. Finally, you have the in-out settings. Now by default, it usually selects the last used, but I actually recommend to choose either stereo mix or one of the in-out settings that you may have created. The reason why is because if you are opening up a new session after a friend of yours may have opened up their session or you opened up somebody else's session on your computer, then Pro Tools will load all of their settings. Therefore, I find that having your own in-out setting ready to go or choosing stereo mix will likely set up your session properly. After you click OK, you will need to choose a place to save your session. Now, if you look at my computer, you'll notice that I have several different hard drives. It is highly recommended by Avid to have a separate hard drive other than your system hard drive to store and run your sessions from. So in the case of my computer, you can see I have a Mac hard drive, and this is my operating system hard drive. I've got my projects drive where I store all of my sessions. I also have chosen to have a sample drive where I put all of my third-party sample libraries on it. And then finally, I have one more hard drive that I use to back up all of my sessions and my operating system hard drive. So, in this case, let's go ahead and navigate to my project drive. We will name this Session Start and create the session. Now, it's important to note, if I go to where I just created the session, notice that it is a folder, and inside the folder we have several different assets related to the session. We have the project file, and then we also have folders for the audio files, bounce clips, clip groups, and also video files. It's important to note this because I've seen many times that somebody might come bring a session to me and all they bring is the session file, which is a .ptx or a .ptf file. 
And in the case that their session should have audio files, the session will show up as missing the different audio files. So if you are ever needing to move your session to another computer or share it with somebody else, make sure that you are delivering the session folder with all of its assets in it. Now if I close my session, you will notice that the session will collapse down to only the assets that are needed for the project. Now I'm going to open this back up. And one thing that's important to do is if you are going to share the session with somebody else, I highly recommend to use File, Save, Copy in, and check Audio Files. And if you are using Melodyne for pitch correction, selecting Session Plugin Setting Folder as well, and then hitting OK, and then choosing the place that you would like to move the session to. By doing that, you will ensure that you will have all of the assets related to your project so that when they open it up on their system, they will have everything that they need. Also, I recommend to go to Setup, Preferences, and under the Processing tab, to choose Automatically Copy Files on Import. By checking this check mark, that will ensure that anytime you drag any audio files or audio loops into Pro Tools, it will copy those files into your session's audio files folder.